A couple of videos ago, we mentioned coffee mead. And that sounded amazing. So today, we're making coffee mead. So, coffee mead. We're essentially using the same recipe as our traditional mead, except we're using cold brew coffee instead of water. Now you want to use cold brew coffee because the shelf life is much longer than hot coffee. And cold brew coffee is pretty easy to make. I use a ratio of four cups per gallon for about 16 hours before pulling the grinds out. What? Why are you looking over there? Or I thought we were supposed to be looking at this camera. No, this is our primary camera. You said this camera. No, this one is our primary. That's the backup. Okay, well good. Okay. Are you looking at that camera? We disagreed on that one. You said that one. No, okay, look. Which, which camera's primary? That one. That one, okay. This is our primary camera. Can you believe this guy? As for honey, we're using about a half gallon of wildflower honey and one gallon of sorghum honeydew. So why are we honey. mixing up the honeys this time? Because that's what I had. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I had a half gallon of this left over and the sorghum honey had some really nice uh, caramel molasses flavors to it. I thought that would go really well on the coffee meat. Man, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty excited about this coffee. I'm meat. super stoked. Let's get started. Let's do this. So here we have our, okay, you're gonna have to put that little, yeah, yeah. This actually isn't quite as heavy as I'm acting like it is. Four gallons. Now we're also, oh, I'm just gonna scratch my thing. Now we're also at, which camera are we looking at? That one. We're also adding five vanilla beans. The reason we're adding vanilla beans is because vanilla beans can sometimes enhance the perceived sweetness of mead. And I think the vanilla would go wonderful in a coffee. Absolutely, I think so. We're using five vanilla beans. I have four here and one more. And we're gonna probably gonna chop these up into itty bitty pieces, slice the deal open, throw the whole bean in there. Let's do it, shall we? Absolutely. Yeah, you can be the honey pourer. Yeah, I usually am. Oh, hold on, that's a... Uh... Oh gosh. What? We probably want to pour some of that in there. I'm trying to mix it up and shake it in there, and then pour it back. Do you have a sanitized cup? So we're gonna pour some of this coffee into... No! Use a cup. My hands aren't sanitized. That's what the cup's for. But they are now. You picked the cup. Man, we are very, we are very professional. At this. You had to pick a cup with a lid on it, huh? With a handle. Handle it. Cut that out. <laughs> Don't breathe on you it. Wanna cut, you I gotta re-sanitize now. What? You just breathe all. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We all know how, how you like your messes. <laughs> Spread your Diet Coke all over the floor. That was you. <laughs> no, you. You're the one who put the mint cups in. Okay, I'm just gonna let's do one more. Oh my gosh. You just had to pick this cup, didn't you? All right, now get your drill and mix it up. You can shake the one gallon one. No, it's a cardboard. You don't shake a cardboard. The one gallon one's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go first. Look at the beautiful color it's making. That really is. They say that if you put, you can do something to honey to make it like, if it forms into patterns, it forms into honeycomb patterns. Interesting. I heard that somewhere. That would be interesting. Should, that, that should be something we should We should into. try that sometime. <laughs> That'd be good short. Oh, dang. 
I'm supposed to take the hat off. Well, I guess I'm going a hat for this recipe. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> Make an interesting. <laughs> Ready? Get more shaky. Now, we're fermenting in these spherical uh, containers that I have. And I bought these because they're eight gallon containers and I needed a big container for large fruit secondaries. But after secondary in them, I fell in love. The spherical nature of this makes so many things easier. I mean, they are harder to carry around, but all the yeast, the trub, the yeast cake, it, it, it's condensed in this tiny, little spherical bottom it's so easy to rack off of it's just and it looks cooler too and it's very easy to clean oh it's so easy to clean just happened I don't think I'm ever going to ferment in anything else but that I know right it's <laughs> old it's <laughs> <I'm> old <laughs> hey, it's too bad we don't have a bed or something like that we can go lay on I'm doing that Let's sit out for the feet up somewhere mm -hmm. uh, it's okay buddy take as long as you want yeah don't don't rush <laughs> yeah don't hurry so let me tell you a funny story about I swear I'm sorry. let me tell you a funny story about Oktoberfest Derek brought me some Oktoberfest today and said, hey, Eric, drink this. I did not say so me, drink this. So me, being the obedient best friend that I am, I opened the bottle and I drank the flat Oktoberfest. I told him not to drink it. He said, it has to wait two weeks <laughs> to carbonate. <laughs> and then he comes over and how'd you, and how'd you like my Oktoberfest? And I said, <laughs> it was... Nope. My, yeah. No, I the love. first thing I said is, you didn't drink that Oktoberfest, did you? Because I know how Derek is. <laughs> I was drinking I know, it while like, he said huh? that. I know how Eric the is. The flat <laughs> Oktoberfest. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably, it'll, it'll probably be wonderful when it's carbonated. Mm. You know what? Say what you will. <laughs> I think it was wonderful, warm, and uncarbonated. No. I can imagine it's only going to get much better. It wasn't bad, but it was it probably amazing. better. It was amazing. Probably better when it's fizzy. I think it was the best Oktoberfest ever made. It probably is. While it's doing that, we're going to chop up these vanilla beans. Did I drop one? No, I think you're good. Okay, so where are we at? Can you read the little how many gallons part on there? Uh, we're at five and a half. Oh, we're at five and a half gallons. So we're, we're good to go right there. So we're gonna mix this up and pitch our starter, which is behind me, and we're good to go. All right, well, and, so we're gonna mix, right? You know, remember our PSA. Don't, well, this isn't a glass carboy. This is a plastic spherical thing. It's still not a good idea to hurt yeah. yourself. Don't pick this up and shake them. Don't be like me. We got this stirring tool. It fits onto a drill bit. Does this work or what? That's awesome. Ah. Are you tall enough to stir this? I think so. <laughs> now, these come in both plastic and metal, but which, whichever option you have, it's very important not to let the blades, the uh, wings, whatever, touch the glass or plastic. If it's plastic, you could scratch it. If it's glass, you could break it or chip it. And the last one we want is glass chips in our mead. You don't actually use the wings to mix the mead up. The wings make a vortex inside the mead and the vortex is what mixes it up. <laughs> okay, 
we're going to do that some more. We're going to do that a lot. But first, we're going to add all of our nutrients. Just like our traditional mead, we're adding four tisps of Firmado, two tisps of Firmade K, and one tisp of potassium carbonate. Now, as usual, you don't need to go hardcore with this measuring stuff. Close enough is good enough. Yeast don't care about milligrams or micro teaspoons, and you shouldn't either. Just close enough. So we're adding four teaspoons of Firmado. This is a half teaspoon measuring thing. So eight of those. And two tisps of Firmade K. And one tisp of potassium carbonate. And now we're gonna mix this up real good. so mixed. It's the best mix of mead we've ever had. And that is how you mix a mead. Now we're gonna pour our, hey, put it in there, start up. No, don't do it. Here, I can fit it. No, you can't. <laughs> we're gonna pour this in there. Hey, I, don't gonna... know, I don't know how it happens, but how does your floor oh. always get sticky? Because you keep spilling stuff all over it. I'm almost stuck to the floor. <laughs> Sanitize this and this too. You want to pour that in? Or are you going to grab a reading first? Okay, we can go ahead and pour it in. Look at the foam, it's just building up. It's, it's, it's lovely, isn't it? Oh. Oh, the freaking stir rod. I about to say, I just heard something. I forgot about the stir rod. <laughs> well. <laughs> hey, if you ever need to get the stir rod. That stir rod's got to stay in there. Maybe the magnet will do something. <laughs> They're cheap. We'll just go get another one. I got a magnet stick to dig it out, but I don't think it's long enough. Let me see if it's long enough. So I dropped my little stir bar in there, but I think we might be able to get it out. It'll be on this thing right here. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. It's coming. Let me sanitize real it. quick. I got it. What's gonna work? Teamwork. Dude, you're really smart. <laughs> I'm glad you're my partner on this. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's do a gravity reading. Yeah. Grab our little cup out. You made our sanitizer water all coffee-ish and stuff. Why didn't you pick a glass without a handle? Wait. You never put no specifications. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be so hard to read this. <laughs> We're going to have to let it sit for like an hour. <laughs> Before we can even get a gravity reading. Oh my gosh. We, I think we mixed it up a little too much. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're gonna let that sit for a while. And hey, don't put it here, do nothing. Like most of our meads, this one's going to require a nutrient schedule. You wanna add four tisps of Ferme dough on day two and another four teaspoons on day four. Now the starting gravity for this mead was 1.110. I wanted to start at 1.140, but apparently I mismeasured the honey. Oops. So we're going to add four more pounds on day four with that last Fermate O nutrient addition. Why on day four? We can add it now if you want to. Go get some honey. We'll add it on day four. We'll wait till day four. 
Now I could leave this meat alone, ferment it just like that. It'll finish about 14% and bone dry. But we want a little bit of sweetness to the meat. I like sweetness in all my meat. And a little higher ABV too. Would you prefer a sweet coffee mead or a dry coffee mead? Let us know in the comments down below. See you next time.